The first cohort of the Hurdy School was tiny. We were 27 students. No one knew what to expect. The professors didn't know what to expect. The students didn't know what to expect. Everyone thought, you know, this is the year, the cohort that has to prove the value of the Hurdy School. And in a way it was liberating because we could shape what the school was, but it was also a lot of expectation and a lot of pressure, I think, for all of us, not only for the students, but also for the, for the professors in the school. We are celebrating our 20th birthday with the motto, looking back to move forward. And my conviction is that we can learn a lot from history and it helps us to better prepare the future. I mean, first of all, how do you was from the very beginning on a place of its own. That we are the Hurdy School and we are different from a graduate school, we're different from a business school. We give you an education that you may not get elsewhere in this country. I very much remember the birth of the Hattie School because I was at the time in Cologne studying with uh, colleagues who have since then moved to the Hattie School. I had other colleagues who were involved with the early idea and the creation. And I remember thinking, what an odd experiment, a private university dedicated to training for the practice of politics and in different fields. And I was also not sure if that could work. There were many colleagues and friends who were skeptical about the chance to develop such a place like this. Some universities, they, they frowned upon us. They said, oh, what is this private, uh, private school they're doing, right? And keep in mind, it was an independent school of governance. It was not part of an existing university. That means there was nothing where you could embed it and say, well, there are some rules which you have to follow because they have to be followed by all of the institutions of this university. And there was only the German law, essentially, and, and the idea. One of the basic ideas was interdisciplinarity. So you have economists, political scientists, sociologists, legal scholars, and even the art historian or philosopher. And they all come with their own uh, déformation professionnelle. We need to have an umbrella that offers something for everyone. Another one also very important. I mean, this was the high time of globalization, international energy. So many people from different parts of the world. We have people from Africa, from Asia, from South America, from the US. That make the discussion in classes richer. The idea was, of course, to do this from the very beginning on, on a level of highest conceivable quality. The very, very ambitious goal was we want to move into the first league from the first day on. In this very, very beginning, you need to convince students that this will be a great school by telling them there will be a great faculty. For faculty, and particular internationally renowned faculty to, to keep them at a public policy school like Hurdy. You needed a PhD program. You want to train the next generation of researchers and uh, you need willing helpers for your own research projects. But it normally takes 10 years for a, a private university to even come close to being considered. Developing the application, which was uh, a serious business, kept us busy for months. There was that at stake. Right? If we had failed, it would have set us back for for years. Luckily, when, uh, when we received the notification from the German Science Council, uh, it was caused for celebration. And, and sooner or later, we had over 50, 60 PhD students here. And that changed uh, the atmosphere. And it was more of a research institution than it was before. So when we started studying in 2005, we had a set curriculum in the public policy program, which was the only one that existed at the time. But the faculty right from the start um, told us students, we're here to teach you whatever you want. And we had a lot of flexibility to shape the program. We had maybe half of the students who were really interested in what I went into later in my career, which was global health. And we asked the professors, could we you know, could we learn something about this? And one of the professors right away said, yes, sure, I'm going to bring practitioners and professors on this topic from all over the world to teach you weekly. And that's how we set up a program. And that's how many of us en ended up going into this career space. Not only in coordination, but also in the data science lab, they are interested in listening to us. And I think that is super appreciated because if you as an institution receive the feedback from the students and then from the next year 
improve that feedback or implement that feedback, the experience is going to be even better to the next uh, heritage generations. So we are very proud to very soon move into a new campus on Dorotheenstraße, which is a historic scientific building where people have worked to solve the most urgent issues uh, of the time. And we're doing so not with uh, medicine, but with the challenges that we think society is facing, the economy is facing, politics is facing, and with the same conviction that fundamental research can really help us move forward. And also with the conviction that we need to get the world to Berlin and to this heart of the political Berlin to do this with us. And I think what really makes Herdy special is our drive to shape policy and to make the world a better place. One of the biggest things that Herdy was able to give me was this community that we created. I mean, I even consider them my family here. I believe in this project. I believe that Herdy students has the potential to change the world, and that is why I'm so happy to be part of this institution.